Honorable Chairs, a request was made by the United Nations General Assembly for Kenya to consider leading a UN-backed multinational peace support mission to Haiti. A similar request was also made by the Transition Authority in Haiti to the President of Kenya. And after diplomatic engagements between our country, the United Nations organs, including the United Nations General Assembly and the United Nations Security Council, Kenya did accept to lead the multinational effort to send a peace support mission to Haiti. And therefore, this is not a Kenyan mission, it's a United Nations mission, but Kenya has been asked to lead the coordination of that effort. At that point, Honorable Chairs, Kenya did put two conditions which have to be met by the international community, the United Nations and its members, for us to make the contribution that our country has been asked to make. The first condition was that the mandates of the mission had to be anchored properly in law and particularly, we sought the backing of an approval of the United Nations Security Council under Chapter 7 of the UN Charter. Condition number two, our country emphasized that all the resources that are required for Kenyan members of the police service to participate in this multinational peace support mission, all those resources must be mobilized and made available before we deploy. And by resources, I mean all the resources required to kit, to train our officers for pre-deployment uh, uh, preparations, but also the equipment of all types and other logistical expenses that are required, including the transportation of officers, must be the obligation of the international community that made the request, and that condition must be met before our troops leave the soil of our country. The overall budget for the mission, for the one-year mission uh, pending a review uh, because after the one year the UN will make a decision whether there will be another request or not. The total budget is 600 million US dollars and that involves uh, monies for, 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 for preparing the, 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 the forces, uh, the officers, kitting them, transporting them, sustaining them there. Uh, transporting their, them there in Haiti, their logistics, their communications, their food, their allowances, and all that goes with that, and also bringing them back home at the end of the mission. And as the IG perhaps will clarify, we are not taking their thousand officers at once. It's not even strategic. We will take them in batches. Um, uh, that is the strategic thing to do. They'll go in stages uh, during the period. The first condition was met on, Oct on October 2nd, 2023, when the UN Security Council passed Resolution 2699, 
of 2023, giving the multinational uh, support mission to Haiti legal backing. The second condition, which is the mobilization of all the resources required to prepare, deploy, sustain, and eventually withdraw our police officers from Haiti. That exercise is going on, is being coordinated by our Ministry of Foreign and Diaspora of Affairs, and just again, to emphasize, Kenya will not deploy if all the resources required are not assured, committed to, and available. And those resources include the equipment that we require for the mission to be successful. We have agreed on a number of things that first of all, the resources for this mission will be uh, arranged or mobilized among the member states of the United Nations. And they have already identified the way the funds will be mobilized and how they will be made available for us. The only assurance that I want to give uh, 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 honorable chairs is that unless all resources are mobilized and availed, our troops will not leave the country. Not even one of them will leave Kenya. So that work is ongoing, including the mobilization of equipment. And once again, our troops, not even one of them, our forces, our officers, will not leave the soil of Kenya until the equipment that is required on the ground in Haiti is in place. So that work is ongoing. But what we've done as we wait for that impact on domestic security. I want to assure the committee, the joint committee, that this deployment will not in any way whatsoever compromise the capability and capacity of the National Police Service and other organs of national security to secure the country. We have made arrangements to ensure that we do not disrupt any of the ongoing programs, especially with regard to sensitive security operations around complex uh, criminal activities in our country. And therefore, our assurance is that we have taken great, great, great detail to make sure that we do not affect our internal security operations uh, through this deployment. And the Inspector General of Police and the service commanders have assured the National Security Council that everything will go on as the objectives of this deployment, that's number two, is to support the Haiti National Police in maintaining law and order because they have experienced breakdown of law and order for a long time, for some time now, as a result of gang violence. Um, and to assist the National Police of Haiti to create a conducive socio-economic environment in their country. The mandate, of course, of this uh, uh, deployment is one year. After one year, there will be a review. In between the one year, there will be periodic review also of progress. And we'll be happy to be reporting progress of our participation, the outcomes, the challenges, and the experiences from time to time. Uh, we have uh, put in what is it that is there for the people and the country um, uh, through this deployment. Number one, it's a great honor for our police officers to be engaged in this uh, multinational uh, uh, effort. It's, it's, it's a career-defining honor. And um, many of our officers, not many, actually all of them, 
we could not even satisfy the interest. Our officers are really looking forward to the mission. And that is something the committee could, the, the joint committee could verify. They are really looking forward to this deployment. It's a career defining uh, uh, opportunity. And I think it will be unfair to deny our officers an experience that is a once in a lifetime uh, experience for many of them, especially those who, if I think most of them were not there uh, when some of the most active and most prominent missions were taking place. That is something. Over the years, the United Nations has always exercised collective security arrangements. And I am proud as a Kenyan to say that in the history of the United Nations, our country has been a leading participant in offering global solutions from time immemorial. Particularly in the last 40 years, Kenya's footprint in international peace support and security arrangements within the global community have been consistent. And no wonder, therefore, honorable chairs, that our country was requested to provide this leadership. Of all the missions to support peace and to enforce peace around the world, in the last 40 years, Kenya has played a leading role in one way or the other. 